I'm streaming. Live what streaming it says. on YouTube. All right. Now we're live again. Uh, that's a good sign, guys. <laughs> so welcome live to Germany, I would say. Richard Hart. How are you Pleasure. doing, man? Doing all right. Doing all right. So we just had some technical problems, but we're live again. And I'm very sorry, but you have to introduce yourself again and so that the German people who don't know you um, get to know you a little better, who you are, what sure. you did. And so let's go. So uh, I'm Richard Hart, and my uh, YouTube is youtube.com forward slash Richard Hart. I am a retired serial entrepreneur. I've founded a bunch of companies. Uh, the biggest one had 150 employees, did about 60 million a year uh, turnover. I retired in 2003, started traveling the world, um, lived in a hotel for five years, just been everywhere. I uh, started mining Bitcoin back in 2011 in the first quarter. I mined full blocks on my own with no pool back when the block reward was uh, 50 BTC. You didn't have to pay fees. There wasn't, fees were optional back then. Um, so they did their Bitcoin mining, at first was you could just use it with your CPU, right? So that I missed that, unfortunately. I, got, I was one of the first GPU guys. Um, okay didn't get to play the CPU game. That would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, so, you know, I've been in Bitcoin since 2011 and Bitcoin does a lot of things well and it does a lot of things terribly. And for some reason, uh, you know, there's no two door car maximalists that only like two door cars and there's no pencil maximalists that hate pens. But for some reason in crypto, people get this bias where whatever bag they have of coins, that's the only good coin in the world and nothing else good could ever possibly exist and no progress could ever possibly exist. Only their bag of coins is good. And it's disgusting. It's like a fork maximalist, you know, eating soup with a fork because he owns a bag of forks and he doesn't want to buy a spoon. It's just so stupid. There's one coin to <clears throat> rule them all. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's obviously not the case. I mean, Bitcoin dominance was at like 35% in 2017. Transactions are slow as fuck. There's no anonymity. There's no uh, tokens on top of it. it. The two companies that tried to build tokens on top of it basically were annihilated, which were Counterparty and uh, Colored Coins. Colored Coins actually got some adoption uh, through their Omni protocol because Tether was using them, and Tether, a non-crypto, actually is the most successful crypto by users and volume. There's more trades in Tether than any other cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin, because people aren't traders. They're too stupid to know that. So I have to tell it to them because I know more than they do. Um, <clears throat> so the most successful actual adoption of crypto has been Tether and or Ponzi schemes. It's a good question. I mean, they're quite um, successful, the Ponzi schemes. I mean, they're, they're, I mean Ponzi is... Like stuff like that hasn't has been around for like ages. I mean, it's just a new game with crypto, right? Yeah, the the difference the, the difference between a Ponzi and a cryptocurrency is the likelihood that it comes back after a crash. Because yeah, even the best true. cryptocurrencies crash hard. Even so Bitcoin, Bitcoin's yeah. been down at eighty five percent three times and it's likely to continue doing that because that's just how it is. Um, you know, it's a it's a highly speculative instrument with low base level demand. And, uh, you know, fear of missing out, making big candles on the way up and, you know, uh, fear of losing everything, selling the bottom with big candles on the way down. And it's like, I don't, I don't see that really changing. I don't, I don't see that market dynamic changing anytime soon. So that's part of the game. So, you know, but the, the reason for not changing is, is the use case. I mean, what, what, what's the use case of crypto besides speculating? Well, there, there really isn't much of one compared to the market caps. So we, we do have dark net transactions, which are maybe 3% of all the volume. And we do have, you know, oh, my country sucks. So maybe I have some currency here, which is probably like 0.02% of all the volume. The vast majority of cryptocurrency today is speculation. And that's fine, because that's the only way you're going to be able to get enough economic mass to have utility as a real currency one day. So, you know, you have to, it's just like cell phones. Cell phones used to cost too much, and the only people that could have them, you know, maybe they were drug dealers, maybe they were government officials, maybe they were a weird class of people that you're not a member of. But because they helped bootstrap that economy, and there was revenue there for companies, then the technology could continue to be improved to make its way down to the normal people. 
And cryptocurrency is the same thing. If you want to see a wallet in everybody's uh, phone and you want to remove counterparties and have lower fees and faster transactions, f faster finalized transactions. If you like don't want to- Dash, right? Dash is pretty, pretty awesome in that all, the, all these cryptocurrencies work. Have you heard of anyone losing money in Dogecoin? <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, what, what, Dogecoin is a pretty good coin. I was like, I mean, I'm I'm pretty active on on Twitter, reading and just to get a like a feeling what's happening in the market. And many people are saying if Dogecoin doesn't move, we don't have alt season, right? And it hasn't moved yet. <laughs> I mean, it it's people. So it's another one of these weird bias things. And I used yeah. to be one of these guys. I was a big maximalist guy. Hate all the other coins. And then I learned that it was stupid. Like when Bitcoin pumps, the altcoins pump. When the altcoins die, Bitcoin dies. They live and die together. So if you're shit-talking someone else's bag, it's funny because you're shit-talking your own bag because they live and die together. As odd as that is and as unfair and unreasonable as that is, it's, it's the it's, fact. It's way more fragmented. You know, when, uh, I mean, you've been around for quite a while. I got into Bitcoin like in 2016 and just um, bought it for like a few things. I didn't put in much money. I wish I had, you know, but I just put a little bit and get to use it and basically fell down the rabbit hole and got excited about this whole stuff. And in 2016, Bitcoin was great. I mean, it worked great. It was fast. The fees were cheap, you know. I remember onboarding guys telling them, hey, go download the Bitcoin wallet. Um, I think they used blockchain info or whatever it was. Send him 20 bucks. Uh, he gave me 20 bucks cash and I sent him 20 bucks in Bitcoin. It was, it was very, I don't know. I, I, the fees were like a cent or two cents or below that even mm -hmm. and um, that drastically changed um, um, I mean uh, so much has happened still then and for me Bitcoin this this whole digital gold narrative I mean I don't buy it and um, it's the only one we got I mean if you don't buy that one there ain't none left I mean that's the only one that's had adoption there's no one sure. less retailers accept Bitcoin now than two years ago less on-chain volume than two years ago less ATMs that will let you interact with them without AML KYC than two years ago. Almost everything's worse than two years ago, except the software. The software is better. I think mining centralization is worse as well. So like every, everything is worse in Bitcoin, <laughs> except for the, what? even the price is worse. The price is half <laughs> as much too, but the I mean, software I, is better. The software is yeah, better, yeah, yeah, true. but I mean, everything yeah, else yeah, is lots, worse. Lots of, lots of bugs in Bitcoin, you know, like there's inflation bug and, I don't know. Like well, people don't. I don't. I don't Bitcoin, think they should be called an inflation bug. It's such bullshit. People think, ah, yeah. oh, you know, inflation. I live with it. It's not that bad. Inflation bug in Bitcoin means anyone can print as many free coins as they want. Go the fuck home. It's over. Like that's what inflation bug means. Bitcoin has had two of them. So hex solves all this shit. Like hex is extremely resistant to inflation bugs because the consensus code is locked and isolated and uneditable. Whereas, obviously, the consensus code in Bitcoin gets fucked with all the time, which is why bugs get introduced. Well, we fixed that. We're going to talk about Hex. I mean, I'm really looking forward to, to that part of the We fixed a lot of stuff. <clears throat> because, I mean, uh, Hex is, I mean, so many, before we get into Hex, let me just uh, uh, talk to you about the, the feeling in the crypto community. So in 2016, it was basically the feeling I had was us versus them, the banks. Mm -hmm the politicians, the governments, whatever. There was this community feeling. Yep. And that fragmented in 2017 yep. after the bull run and with Bitcoin Cash and all these other coins, like there are, I don't know how many thousands of coins coming mm -hmm. out. And, and as you say, people are shit talking coins. And, and just look at the Bitcoin folks. Bit BTC is uh, down talking, uh, Bitcoin Cash, uh, who don't like uh, BSV. And the BSV guys, I mean, I like Bitcoin. To tell you vision because I mean, let them try. You know, that's that's just one way to go about scaling. And why not try it? You know, that's that's a good thing, I think. But they all talk trash about each other and say, "Oh, we're going to do this," and you're calling the shit. And I don't uh, have a feeling that we're basically moving as a community in the in, as one. You know, and I'm not sure if that's that's the right way to do well, it. Well, I mean, I, I have a unique perspective on this. I think most people in the cryptocurrency community are a bunch of cocksuckers. <laughs> They're really fucking terrible. <laughs> they're not funny. They're not nice. They're not social. They're they're fucking pricks. The, the okay. majority probably of people in cryptocurrency. And I'll tell you, you how you discover geez. this. All these motherfuckers, okay. all of them. So unless you write code in crypto, you're kind of a bitch, first of all. Okay, because you're you're standing on the, the backs of all the people that worked for free to give you something to play with. 
So the real, the real heroes of cryptocurrency are developers. The core devs are awesome uh, and, and every honest coin. Those are the guys that really matter. And then who else do you got? Uh, you got the guys that scream and yell and try and onboard users. Okay, they have utility. And then you guys got the guys that build infrastructure, right? Like maybe the exchanges, uh, phone wallets, stuff like that. Important. Okay, we need those things. But then you have this whole class of shit-talking idiots that doesn't know anything about anything. They've never been successful in their entire life. They're broke. They're stupid. But they're just smart enough to think that they're smart. It's the Dunning-Kruger effect. And then they run their mouths and flap their mouths on Twitter and become influencers or, you know, write articles, right? Like some guy's never heard of crypto before in his life, but then he buys a coin and now he's, you know, qualified to start writing articles. So I mean, it's for, funny, you know, so like you, you <clears> see <throat> popping Twitter accounts popping up in uh, like in 2017 and all of a sudden they got hundreds of thousands of followers and it's like, who's this guy? It's like, maybe he had some great, some great trades. No, but, but then you see, ICOs, you see you post something like, and it gets eight likes. You're like, oh, they're not really, those are fake followers. Yeah. If you post something and you don't like get likes on it and you have lots of followers, those are fake followers. The people that really follow you that like you, they like the stuff that you say and they click like. Um, so this, there's like a Twitter audit thing that you can do to try and detect the, the bullshitters. So, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and a lot of other cryptocurrencies, they're very functional, they're very useful and they've all got things they can do better. And we're given programmable money now. Why don't we program it to do better things? Exactly. It's that it's, easy. It's the next evolution, <clears throat> right? Yeah. So with, with Bitcoin, you know, I was like, what's, what, on what side are you on? Do, do you think Lightning is going to solve any problems? Or do you think it's the big blocks? Or do you think it's Bitcoin Cash? And, uh, what, well, they're all what, answering the wrong question. Okay. They're all answering the wrong question. So if you're, if you're worried about scalability in your blockchain, we have it already, and it's in the form of all the empty blockchains. They will work. <laughs> There's a shitload of empty blockchains. Go get all that scale you need, homie, for nearly free. Go. Oh, but you don't actually need scale because you don't actually have users. Yeah. So what you have is a user problem, not a scale problem. Yeah. So people I mean, building. That's, that's one of the biggest problems, right? If you don't, uh, if you don't have users, I'm, because w w what are people doing? They want to get into crypto. And get out of crypto with a profit. They don't want to use it. I mean, not in the West, not in Germany, not in Europe. Maybe in different. We can't like use it. Way. Where are you going to use it? Go try and buy a computer with Bitcoin. Give Online it a shot. you can do it. Online, it's you very can hard. Do it. It's not as easy as you think. I think you'll yeah. find some places that used to accept it don't accept it anymore, and you haven't checked in in a while. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I, I personally would uh, would be able to find uh, electronics or. Crypto accepting sites very easy. In Germany, we have one of the biggest food deliveries who accept crypto online. If you order online, you can pay with crypto. I mean, uh, but what the problem is, you know, people don't want to spend the crypto. They don't want to spend it. They say, I'd rather spend my euros or dollars or whatever. Well, I'm because, good with that. I, yeah. I like that. Like, sure, why would you want to sell the thing that tends to go up more than anything else in the world? So, exactly so let's, about the, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about what, what use crypto could have to the world. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you believe people should be able to interact with each other financially without permission of a third party? Of course. If the answer is yes, and I know it's yes in Germany because you guys use more cash than anybody. Mm -hmm. You guys have a lot of stores that do not accept credit cards. Exactly. Because some shit went down after World War II where you guys realized that having a list of people could be dangerous, right? So the Stasi was keeping a list of people to fuck up and they would go fuck them up. And they would use, you know, your connection to other people to do that. So I think in Germany, you have more sensitivity to that type of de-anonymization. De um, you're more sensitive to it than other countries where they haven't had people maybe busting down doors and, you know, pulling family members out. So I think that you should support the anonymous use of cryptocurrency where you can, uh, you know, transact, buy and sell with other people without having to worry about getting permission from somebody, particularly a computer that has no face. So if you believe that we should have, you know, cryptocurrency only and not digital cash, or you, if you think we should have digital uh, money in the form of credit cards or crypto and get rid of physical cash, you're a piece of shit. Because the internet goes down all the time. When the internet goes down, your fucking crypto goes down, your bank card goes down, everything goes down. And in times of war, which happen, 
or pandemic virus, which happens, we need physical fucking money. We need physical money because the internet's going down. And people don't realize that, that it's a national security concern. And they keep removing ATMs all over the world, which is disenfranchising people that need ATMs, people that are on vacation. Um, you know, it, it, it's reducing the availability of cash, which is de-anonymizing all of the users, which is creating a drag on the economy by forcing, you know, 1% of GDP through the fucking credit card company. I mean, what does, KYC, what does KYC really solve? I mean, it's like they talk about our oh, criminals use this and criminals use crypto. I mean, criminals drive a car. They use a mobile phone. They, I mean, there will always be criminals any, everywhere in the world. It's like a certain percentage of the population will do bad things. And I don't think you can stop that with the KYC or whatever. You know? it's, it's fantasy law enforcement. There's real law enforcement done by real investigators and real prosecutors that do legwork and ask questions and have thought. And then there's fake law enforcement where you just get more data that no one ever looks at. So, hey, these guys are looking for a needle, needle in a haystack. Let's give them more hay. <laughs> That's stupid. You know, the vast majority of, of people that ever been arrested uh, in regards to cryptocurrency, they were not caught from the cryptocurrency side. They were caught from, you know, every other possible thing. And the last thing to come up was a crypto thing. So it's just, it's, it's pseudo law enforcement, like the TSA, security theater. It's every time they try and like test to see whether they catch stuff that's trying to get on the plane, it's 100% failure rate. Everything gets through. And you're like, okay, well, since everything gets through, I guess no one's actually trying to get anything through because it doesn't work, right? Like you're, like, so it's just security theater. So now everyone's getting felt up at the, at the check-in line and having the kids molested, why? For no fucking good reason. It's just, you know, because people are cowards. They're not, they're not willing to just, it's the thing I can never understand. You're like, okay, we're gonna stop people from getting on this plane with explosives, okay, cool. But what about the queue to get onto the plane that has just as many fucking people in it? They could just pop it right before the check. Like, what the fuck? You're still like, and then, okay, well, we're gonna check them twice. Okay, well, then the fucking car is on the way in. Like, it's just, it's stupid. Yeah, but if you look like if you look at China, you even have to get screened uh, when you go board a train. Right? Even well, really that is different in this case because it is actually helping detect people that could have a virus. So Nowadays it's not all too. loss. <laughs> it's not all loss. In this particular instance, yeah. there is actually great profit in slowing the progress of a pandemic by detecting people that were in Wuhan or you know, might have been affected or interacted with somebody that had the virus, you know? So yeah, like, it's really funny. You know, I saw uh, uh, on Twitter, someone um, talking about virus. Hey, virus is great for Bitcoin. I was like, what, what the fuck are you talking about, man? It's like, uh, uh, you know, want to get rich off of uh, shit like that? Is that you ain't going to get rich something? anyway. Yeah. People dying and reducing the productivity of mankind makes everyone poorer. Yeah. It's, it's so stupid. Like I saw this, Somebody posted on Twitter that uh, Wynn Casinos was like talking about they were losing like $3.2 million a day from having all their Macau casinos shut down. And I posted, I'm like, yeah, well, how much do you think they'd lose if all their customers died? So it's like, there's so many stupid fucking people out there. And unfortunately, I have to interact with them and it's just it's killing me sometimes. I mean, you, you don't really have to. I mean, you, 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 you said you were a serial entrepreneur, you, you sold uh, your companies. And, I mean, basically, you were set before crypto. You, you don't need crypto. Yeah, but what, really, right? People always ask this shit. They're like, yeah, you're, you're already rich. Like, why don't you just stop? How about fuck you? I want to do more. Like, I want to achieve more things in my life. I want to get medical research done. There's nobody working on it. My cat, my dog's dead. My grandparents are dead. Parents will probably be dead soon. Then I'm up on the fucking chopping block. Well, why don't we put in a fight? Like, why don't we put in some effort and fight against that shit? But so instead, you, everyone you spends their time. You should fight. You, you should fight death. Maybe. Fuck it's yeah! All, don't it's, be a maybe pussy. Maybe it's all an illusion. Maybe it's uh, just like a big uh, computer game way, like a simulation. You know. Oh, kill yourself now, then. I want to yeah. see what it looks like. Show me. <laughs> I want to watch. Okay. Yeah, I mean, then don't say that stupid shit. You know it's not true. Like it, I don't know. How do this, I know? Fucking kill yourself. Go do it. No, like I enjoy if, my life. So I don't. I don't. Do I hate that appeal to like. Okay. A, there's a real game going on. There's real life and death consequences going on, and everyone's got their thumb up their ass, pretending the Grim Reaper's not coming, 
and playing fucking Clash of Clans or League of Legends or doing whatever the fuck they're doing when the Green Reaper is just slowly walking up to their door. And it's like the, it's like the three little pig story. Do you want to be the pig with the straw house or the brick house? Do you want, do you want to be the fucking, like, we're given the tools. We're lucky to have the tools to be able to make progress. Progress will be made. The only question is whether your ass will be alive to see it or not. Because it's going to happen. We're didn't gonna... uh, didn't Hal Finney freeze his head or something? Sure. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, he, he did. did right? yes, so, he some did. people suspect he's Satoshi. So maybe um, one day we're going to wake up and f find him back again. Like, you know, what, what's the show called? Futurama? Those yeah. talking heads in this little... Maybe, maybe the guy that uh, was rooting for the virus will go and find his head and put an ice pick in it to make sure he doesn't <laughs> give his private keys. <laughs> So, so if crypto to me, it's, it's so fucking, what, what utility does Bitcoin have that Dogecoin does not have? Um, it was first. It's better known. <laughs> I don't know. It's, by the way, Dogecoin is a fork of Bitcoin. Uh, okay. So if you don't like the way Dogecoin works, you're making fun of Bitcoin software. <laughs> so it's like, uh, <laughs> And then, and then, so people yell at Hex, right? So people overvalued Hex the first day it came out. They over, they valued it at like two billion, like one point eight to two point two billion dollars, depending on what the final supply looks like. Assuming all the supply was circulating, they valued it at one point eight to two point two billion dollar market cap, which is too goddamn much. Which is unreasonable if you look back into uh, twenty seventeen December. I mean, sure. there were like forty or fifty coins worth a billion or more. So I was like, how did, how is this coin worth a billion dollars? Right. <laughs> well, Dogecoin's worth a third of a billion still. <laughs> so the the issue is I think it was overvalued for the first day of a coin. And I think it was overvalued for we're not in the bear market. We're not we're not in a bull market. We're not in a runaway bull market. We may be at the beginning of a bull market. So, you know, the people that got in the very day one, and I published charts showing that might not be a good idea because everyone overfilmed EOS, which had a three hundred and fifty day launch phase as well. Or three hundred and fifty well, period. It's the most successful launch ever, right? Yeah, four point two billion. 4.1, 4.2 billion they raised, which is more it's pretty money. Pretty funny, than... you know. It's like everyone is talking about ah, ICOs. It's really bad with the SEC in the US, and I mean, EOS did it, and they basically got a little slap on the wrist, like pay like I don't know, was it 20 million or something? 24, 24 million. <laughs> yeah. So um... and an exemption to continue doing business. Yeah. Well, so which was, was pretty you good. know valuable to them, I assume. Yeah. So but the... you know, with, with, with Hex, uh, I, I saw many of your interviews, right, and. Um, uh, I, I've, I've been around BitConnect and I saw hundreds of Ponzi systems, plus token, and uh, you name it, right? And one thing they all do very well is get people into this shit. And I mean, the majority gets, I mean, they lose money, which is really bad, but they onboard millions yep. of people. And this is always something I said in, in 2017. It's like, we need a way to, to onboard people in a meaningful way. And you know, yep. I, I always like the idea of like, getting a business to accept crypto and you get a little cut of every transaction but nobody's paying in crypto so it's it's uh, you tried to design something with hex to, to well, solve work so issues, far right? i mean yeah, it's, it? it's doing pretty well i mean it's up 800 percent in yeah. 31 days yeah. so, someone let me know when you can do that in bitcoin true i mean bitcoin can do a couple hundred percent but i don't think over anymore. years it's maybe who knows but um it ain't doing it ain't doing 8x in a month bro <laughs> hex not did. anymore yeah. hex did too you see, it, someone in the chat is uh, writing hex is an ultra scam and see mm -hmm. that's that's one of the things I, I i like the majority of people they think it's a scam mm -hmm. and um if, if it's a scam uh, maybe we, we should define a scam first if, if you want to scam someone you basically telling them shit about something which is not true to get their money, right? But yes. if, I, if I look at your website, um, I don't see that, that you're trying to, to lie or, or oh. deceive someone. You say you designed something with a clear intention, which might do thousands yep. and whatever percent, yep. which might do it. You yep. can't guarantee it, which you say. So I can't I, even give you an estimate to its probability. So, yeah. I mean, not only can I not guarantee it, but... I can also tell you that nearly every crypto goes down 85% at some point exactly. and the shit could all go to zero. And it was so funny to, to, to see the launch, right? In the first days, and that's what I like so much about Hex, right? It's like um, everyone's shit talking it, but if you look at the numbers, how many ETH 
this contract is getting every day. I mean, it, it really got traction and it's like it's been online for like 60 days or something, right? Yep. We've got over $1.5 billion of BTC that has free claimed their hex. Mm -hmm. And those guys are forced uh, to hold their coins for 350 days. They can't end their stake. They can't emergency end their stake. So $1.5 billion of BTC holders is sitting and holding and watching their hex bag yeah. by force. It's free. I mean, um, yeah. I saw some people complaining about, ah, oh, the ratio is so bad, blah, blah, make blah. Make the price blah. higher. You don't like the ratio, make the price higher and get more people to free claim. <laughs> the amount of coins that's available through the adoption amplifier is only the unclaimed coins. So why don't you guys that want the price to be higher and the ratio to be better, go and get more people to free claim their coins. Then they won't be available through the AA system. Yeah. And so then hex might have people, more value. For the people who, who, who don't know what hex is, just say yeah. in, a, in, a, in a simple way, why did you create hex? What was the idea and how does it work? Like As simple as you can. I've been in Bitcoin a long time and I haven't been able to do the things for Bitcoin that I wish I could do because it's broken in many ways. There's no margin in it because there's no referral program in it. It only pays inflation to miners who pollute the environment and dump the price to pay to pollute. That's all they do. $500,000 an hour is what they get paid to pollute the environment to sell the price down. It's terrible. So we get better, more secure network than they have without inflating the currency. So we remove that, uh, that externality, that, that cost, which gives us superior price performance in theory. And, uh, I mean, in practice, if you look at the 8x in, uh, in 31 days. And we also give the coins away for free, which is how Bitcoin got started. It gave away coins for free. Double click on EXE, you get free coins. So, so Bitcoin if, had. If you were early, you could just open up your laptop. You didn't even yep. need to configure anything. Open yep. up your laptop and you were generating yep. blocks of 50 Bitcoin mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yep. like crazy, right? Yes. So Bitcoin has two pump amentals. The inflation rate cuts in half every four years, and they gave out free coins in the beginning, and that's it. Hex has shitloads more. Um, we give free coins to Bitcoin holders only. We give uh, a referral system where if you refer somebody, you get 20% on top of everything that they get from the adoption amplifier, where you transform Ethereum into Hex, or from free claiming, where you get uh, 10,000 Hex plus a speed bonus plus an extra 10% bonus for using someone's referral link. So the currency inflates 32% to pay the referrer and the referee for adoption amplifier use, ETH to HEX, or free claiming uh, BTC signature to HEX. Uh, what else do we have? Um, we, instead of paying uh, miners to dump the price and pollute, we pay stakers to hold the price up. So in HEX, if you're a staker, you don't just get the USD appreciation on the coin if and when it occurs. You also get more coins, which in Bitcoin... Where, where, do, where do these coins come Inflation, from? just like Bitcoin. Okay. Yep. So instead of paying miners, we pay stakers. And we actually inflate less than Bitcoin does because, one, you can only sell uh, coins that are out of stake and you only get paid your rewards at the end of the stake. And many of these stakes occur 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Yeah, I, I saw that. See, that's what I like about the, the project. Yeah. It's like, if you look at uh, what's happening under the hood, um, it, it's completely transparent. You see yep. who, I mean, you don't see, you don't know who's behind the contract or whatever address, but you see how long people are staking yep. and it gives you an, a target base. You can, you can say, you can see in 500 days, there's going to be X million uh, of hex coming yep. into out of stakes. And, I don't know what's going to happen. Then people are going to dump it. They're going to restake it. You don't know. We're, we're the first cryptocurrency in the world with a chart of future market supply. Bitcoin has a chart of future total supply, but you don't know if Satoshi is going to sell. If Satoshi came on live stream right now with us and said, hey, I'm going to sell tomorrow, you wouldn't believe him. You'd think he was lying because why would he tell you? Like Craig, right? <laughs> right. But in Hex, we know. We know when you might sell because we can yeah. see it on the chart. Yeah. So we've got all of these amazing innovations, uh, three audits, from two companies, one economics, two uh, code security. We've got uh, a trustless peer-to-peer -peer, uh, exchange. And called, that's uh, one of the main points, Richard. You know, like if you look at the, the today's uh, ecosystem, 
who's making the money? Exchanges. Yep. Everyone is shilling their leverage trading uh, yep. shit on, on yep. YouTube. I mean, I did that yep. too, but I know that, I mean, I lost money trading. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm not a trader. Maybe I can learn it, but it might take yep. years, whatever. But the majority of people are gonna lose trading. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, who's making money? Exchanges. That's exchanges right. get they, they get hacked right in germany there were exchanges that, they're gone and um the, the, question the opposite is really, of crypto crypto exactly. was designed to get rid of counterparties and give yeah. people a better deal and lower margins yeah. and everyone instead recreated the old system they got rid yes. of the old banks and so they created the new banks the exchanges and lightning to me looks like banking 2.0 is like just on top of bitcoin really. i mean you, you need trust right with lightning. there's just better ways to do it so lightning Lightning tries to get scale using pre-signed commitments with time expirations on them. And it's just not as good as ZK rollups. It's a superior technology. So they both scale, but ZK rollups scales better and yeah, it works what, what, now. What I don't understand about Lightning is really um, that, um, I mean, just say Lightning is going to be successful and it's going to onboard millions of users all around the world. No. What are the miners going to do? I mean, wh why would anyone mine on the BTC chain? Uh, we well, still have to because it all it all has to go back to the BTC chain to settle. So yeah, true. You, you still your the the Lightning chain is still limited by the BTC chain exactly. to a degree. So there's a limit how, how many people you can onboard. Yeah. And, I mean, how many it's just, people can it's settle, like right? it. I would care more. So for more, more Bitcoin value is transacted on the Ethereum network through wrapped Bitcoin than it is on the Lightning network. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, want, if, if you want tier two scaling for Bitcoin, it's already here and it's called Ethereum. So what do you want me to fucking tell you? Like we already have tier two scaling and it already works and it's already better than Lightning and it hasn't had critical vulnerabilities that have lost people money. So use Ethereum. You know, like yeah. take like it's. I mean, I rarely use Bitcoin these days. I, I always use other coins because they are cheaper, they are faster, faster, and, um, so much yeah. faster, <laughs> so you know, like much a, faster. When you go in Germany, you got like Bitcoin ATMs. I mean, you can you can sell Bitcoin, get cash. You gotta wait for three confirmations. If you do the same thing with Dash, you get your money in sixty seconds. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's actually it is a big fucking deal. It's a big deal, and this concept that you should wait. So like having to wait 10 minutes for confirmation and when you do your confirmation, it always takes about 20 magically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like sampling bias. So, or recency bias or survivorship effect, whatever you want to call it. You remember it when it fucks up, but you don't remember when it went okay. So it seems like about 20 minutes when you're doing it and it's really a Poisson distribution. And so some large portion of people really has it less than 10 minutes and some over 10 minutes. See, so, that's, that's also something funny, you know, like the, the, the more I learn about crypto every day, I mean, I keep learning every day, but um, everyone is saying, oh, it's decentralized, blah, blah, and whatever. And, mm -hmm. But the, the thing is, if you look who has the coins, that's right. not decentralized. I mean, it, it's in the hand of a very, yeah, yeah. very 40, few people own. 42% of Bitcoin is in the control of 2,000 addresses. Yeah. You, can go so to, you can Google Bitcoin rich list, and it'll be right there up top, and you'll see it. And it's, uh, I like how people think that Bitcoin's going to cure poverty and shit. And you're like, okay, well, how do the poor people buy in? Okay, yes. they can't. Okay. So how, <laughs> you think poor people need new ways to transfer the money they don't have? Yeah. So much <laughs> stupid going around crypto. Like it just, it's, it's so fucking crazy, unbearable to me. So here, here's the problem with Hex. People go to the website and they say, they see the words designed to 10,000 X. They see designed to appreciate faster than anything else in human history, which was what it was designed to do and show you how, right? So here, Ethereum did 10,000 X in two and a half years and it didn't have all these cool features and we do have all these cool features. So maybe we can beat that number. It's not magic. It's not, it's just going, here's what something else did. And we have all these extra features it didn't. And so probably we can beat that. Well, what I, I like about it is the, <clears throat> the fact that you are in control. Uh, I mean, I mean, oh, wow. the, the per, not, not you, as, not you as Richard, but I mean, the, the individual is in oh. control of their coins. I don't send sure. the coins. I don't send the coins to an exchange. No. I don't give anyone control over my coins. It's, it's a smart contract. Yeah. And I mean, I it's not, it's not coins, just, right? it's not just 
So Hex is so amazing in that one, it's more secure than Bitcoin. It's got more audits. The substrate it runs on, the Ethereum network has a bug bounty program. They've got more developers. They've got a more ambitious roadmap. They've got uh, better technology now with ZK rollups and optimistic rollups. We've got uh, anonymity on chain uh, using uh, Tornado Cash. We've also got other anonymity things. So for instance, ZK rollups, I believe also has anonymity in it. Um, and we've also got uh, another ZK. There's all these zero knowledge things that are coming out on Ethereum that just right, make everything you're, anonymous. You're doing all those, those technical things, right? In reality, no one cares about uh, what, what's better than in Bitcoin or whatever. The, the, what do people care about in crypto most? Well, getting rich. Getting rich. And right. Mad gains. <laughs> yeah. Mad gains. <laughs> yeah. and, so um, Hex has I, those too. Yes, exactly. I yeah. mean, and, and it's, you see, um, when, when the majority of people say it's a scam, I look at things and I want to find out, is it a scam or no? And, uh, and I, I sent some money um, a little bit into the contract and it showed up in my MetaMask. Uh, the coins are in my control. Mm -hmm. I can decide if I want to stake them for how long I want to stake them. Yep. And I can take them out of the contract anytime. I mean, there's a penalty, I guess. But um, Well, I, it's there's no penalty if the stake hasn't actually started, if it's just pending. Okay. So when you start a stake, uh, it doesn't really start till the next day ticks over because it only counts mm -hmm. full days. And so you can end your stake before the next day takes over and when it's so still pending. So let's say I stake for 100 days and take yeah. it out after 50 days. What, what's the penalty? You'll lose all your interest and you'll probably keep your principal. Ah, okay. So if so you I, serve... I don't, I don't lose my coins. I just use the... the if you serve less than half of your of what you're committed to, you will get bitten in principal. Okay. How much? So, I mean, it's a function of how much you would have made. So ah, the more you would have made, then the more it costs you. So if you stake longer and you have like less, if you've served less of a percent, it's going to hit you harder. You can actually look at the wall of shame. So if you go to, uh, I think it's hex.vision, has a wall of shame. Those things. I'm going to put them in the description. Yeah, so we got so many. Cool. Hexstat, singular, hexstat.com, hex.vision, hexinfo.io, hex-data.com. We have the best statistics in all of cryptocurrency. You can see who free claimed, who made a referral fee, who entered the AA, how much did they make? Completely when did they exit? Right? Everything. Everything's totally transparent. Yeah, uh, that's, you see, for me, it's one of the most. Uh, that's that's why I. Uh, that's why we're talking today, you know, because it's yeah. one of the most interesting projects because it's completely open, yeah. and it's completely transparent, and uh, nobody knows what the price is going to be of Bitcoin tomorrow. Nobody right. knows. Nobody knows what's happening to Hex. Yeah. But yeah. the way it's set up is it's just very very interesting, and it's. it's I mean. There are two things I'm really looking forward to. The first bull market with Hex, mm -hmm. which could be absolutely crazy, but I'm really also looking forward to the bear market because the coins are staked, right? So right. why would you sell uh, your coins in the bear market? And if people want to say sell early, they're going to lose. And if some. they do, then the rewards to the people that are staked go up. Yeah, so if, exactly. if when people end their stakes, it leaves more pay for the people. It's just like miners turning off. It leaves more pay for the miners that didn't turn off. So it's, it's really it's, awesome system. It's, I mean, it, it's super well thought out, if, yeah. if you ask me. And, and it, it, it's, it's very, I mean, how did you come up with such... It took mean, a long time. I, yeah, it took a long time, right? Yeah, it took a <laughs> long time. A lot, because you were running into things and you're like, oh, a thing, a bug. Well, how do we solve this? Because mm -hmm. shorter stakes were beating longer stakes. And then we had to invent a share price system to make it so that a shorter staker could never beat a longer staker. And then the side effect of that is that we have share prices that only go up forever. But people are stupid, so they think that's the price. And you're like, no, the share price is not the USD price. The share price is how many hex you have to stake to get a share. It has nothing to do with the USD but, price. But, but people glance, see that and they're like, oh my God, it's a scam. They're guaranteeing gains. You're like, dude, no, that's the share price has nothing to do with the USD price. You're just stupid. Um, now, they could say they're tangentially related because it's harder for people to dilute you after because it's harder for them to get shares. So it makes your earlier shares more valuable. Um, it's 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 functionally similar to compounding interest. So the guys that get in early get more. And the guys that get in later get less. So if we've also got an an analogy to the jumbo CD, where if you lock up more coins, you get paid a little more. Uh, we've also got uh, the, the thing that I think is really important is this hexdex.win, 
which is just a forwarding link to Uniswap, but it yeah. attaches the contract address at the end, so you don't have to manually paste in the which address. Which is also too, you, you don't have to send so your coins to an exchange. I mean, no it, exchange, it's a swap, right? Yep, it's that, that's how that's how crypto is supposed to work right. peer exactly. to peer, right? Exactly. So, no middlemen, no sign up, no AML, no KYC, no counterparty risk. You can swap hex for probably a hundred different ERC twenty tokens if you paste their addresses in there to see which ones have markets open. Uh, you know, maybe they got like 30 or 40 in their search bar. Uh, Hex is the number third highest liquidity uh, Uniswap pair with 5.5 million or 5.7 million liquidity. Days, something, right? like it's yeah, 5.7 million in 60 days liquidity. And it's doing between four, five, six hundred thousand dollars a day of volume. And this is real volume where you can go and you can see who the person was. How'd they get their coins? When did they get their coins? When did they buy them at? When did they sell them at? You could literally chart. Right? It's all on blockchain. On, on BitMEX, if you try and figure out who sold, you don't fucking know. Yeah. They know, but you don't know. Yeah. In in uh, Uniswap and Hexdex.win, which forwards it, um, you can see did this guy free claim? Did he, you know, enter one of these Ponzi's that's built on top of Hex, like Hex Two, <laughs> H E X T E W. Like, uh, there's people are building on top of Hex. So there's games that just use Hex as an input. There's Ponzi's that just use Hex as an input. It's funny when people call Hex a Ponzi. I'm like, oh, you want to see what a Ponzi looks like? Here, go here. That's what a Ponzi looks like, yeah. okay? Because there's one built on Hex, all right? Yeah. It's, it's not really so that. In, in the Ponzi, there's no transparency. It's like m many of well, those Ponzi's, they say, um, or, or like, let's say it's scams. They, they say, oh, we, we do arbitrage trading. We do this. And right. Show so us I'm, 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 I'm mislabeling it, calling it a Ponzi. It's one of these, yeah. you can read the code, and it's basically a game where you have to guess how many people get in after you. So you take a 20%, 22% hit on entry, and then you hope enough other people get in after you to cancel that out. And then the last guy holding the bag gets screwed is how that game works. So it's not technically a Ponzi because it is, you know, open source and clear and you can see what's happening. Um, I'm not sure if it's open source, but maybe viewable source. Um, you can verify it. So it's not technically a Ponzi because there's no deception involved, but it is Ponzi-like in that you kind of expect it to run out of steam at some point and the, and the last guy's in lose. You know? yeah, that's funny about your website. Like, if you come to the, the site and you you just uh, s uh, scroll through it, and you don't go into detail, you don't take your time. I mean, it's it's not an easy concept to get. I mean, hex is it's super complex. It's, it's super interesting, and um, all the people are, are screaming scam and blah blah blah. And They're all assholes. One, one thing you know, what I what I personally don't get is um, what, what I read on Twitter and all those videos or whatever I saw of you. It's like. Um, what is happening to the to the Ethereum I sent to transform to get my? It's like, why do you care? You, you are here because you want to buy hex. <laughs> um, why do you care what's happening to the money you sent it, to get hex? Right? The only like, the only people that say that shit are people that didn't send anything. <laughs> the people that are participating in hex, they like it because it works well and it meets or exceeds their expectations. And every every it is totally honest. The people that hate hex are people that don't actually participate in it. They just scream from the sidelines because they're unhappy they didn't make 8x in 31 days. They're unhappy that they're not number three liquidity, number three volume. They're not, like they're just angry, butthurt haters that have so never do done anything good with their you, life. Why do you think so many people say it's a scam? And um, they say everything's a scam. Every, everybody in crypto says everything's a scam. Everything Every, besides Bitcoin is a scam, like Tom Day says, right? <laughs> And then if you ask anyone in the normal world what they yeah. think about Bitcoin, they'll tell you Bitcoin's a scam. So it's a bunch of people that are just misspeaking. A scam should involve deception. Something could be overpriced. Something could be a bad business idea. It could be run by the wrong people with the wrong incentive structure. People need to be more specific with their language. They've broken the word scam. So there's no, there's no accurate term to describe. I mean, I guess you'd have to call somebody a fraudster or something because they broke the word scam. So it's, it's unreasonable that we no longer have language to describe deceptive practices, which are likely harmful for people, because idiots just call absolutely everything a scam. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it it's crazy. like Hex has more uptime than IOTA. Hex <laughs> Hex has is if you go to the chart. Now most people they're stupid. They're going to go to Coin Market Cap. They're going to type Hex, and they don't have any of the real data there. None of it. It's fucking totally wrong. And then they yell at Hex and say, Hex sucks, it has no volume. No, actually, coin market cap sucks. They need to fix their shit. And then you'll see that Hex has lots of volume. Yeah. So if you then go to CoinGecko, CoinGecko works. 
if you look under the hood, what's happening inside of X and how transparent this is, how you can see everything moving. I mean, you can even flush the address. I mean, there's so yeah. many things, uh, it, it, it's transparent. And if you ask me, um, I, I find it um, refreshing because it, um, it is so transparent and there's nothing mm -hmm. to hide. And the only thing which people criticize is, is that who is getting the Ethereum? It's like, I don't give a shit. It's, it, it has nothing to do really with, with, the, with the contract you're buying yeah. X. Why? Because you want to stake X. Why you want? Because you wanted to appreciate it. I mean, technically, you, you're not buying it. You're minting it yourself. You're, min you're minting but it yourself. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, because it, if someone, if you're buying something from someone, it has to exist. Sure. So the hex, you invent the hex with your own yes. computing power. You have to make your own private key, which generates a public key, which then you use to generate hex. You're doing all the work. So it's it's not like. There's no one else that has possession to give it to you. There's no exactly. one else that could sell it to you. You can only mint it yourself. So only you can mint your rewards. You are in only control. you can mint that's your what, coins. What, that's what I like yeah. about it. You are in and, if, and if I die and the Hex Win website goes offline, no one gives a fuck. Because yeah. you can use it directly through etherscan.io and the guides on the homepage. You can use it through hardhex.xyz, which is a ledger integration that someone built. You can use it through a website called Another Hex. Dot win, which is another front end that somebody built. Okay. Um, so it's fully distributed. Like yeah. you can, you want to trade it? Cool. You can go to a Uniswap dot exchange or hex dex dot win that forwards there, or swap hex dot win which forwards there, or hex I'm sorry swap hex dot com or uh, hex swap dot win which forwards there. Or we've got two or three open other front ends that people have built for it. Yeah. You know, they just forked the standard front end and did it on their own hosting, which I think is called hexwales.win. Mm -hmm. And then there's an IPFS there's hosted one. Happening, um, yeah, we got a shitload of developers. Right? We got a shitload of developers in the chat room doing all kinds of amazing things. Like they're trying to help fix CoinMarketCap's fuck ups by giving them an API to yeah. call the Uniswap trades from. They're trying see, to- but, but, uh, but, but, when, when you come back to the argument, like who's getting the Ethereum? It's like um, if you call, if you if you look at an ICO, you are investing into something which is which is an idea, and yeah. some company has to deliver. You yeah. are basically uh, investing into their ability to bring their product to market and make you some gains. Here, yeah. it's for me, it's like it's it's like buying a, a, a product. If I go yeah. to a shop and I buy a, a computer. I, I part with my euros to get this piece of equipment. And here, for me, it's the same thing because there's there's no development needed for this product to function. It's, it's, it's already- It's done. Yeah, it's done. It's already right? done. And you can't edit it. The code is you, the code is uneditable. It's, it's locked. Exactly. So, it's ready. It's finished. Right. And ICO is where a bunch of people make you promises from entrepreneurial effort and managerial effort to manage your money and show you a return through uh, that effort. Hex is the opposite of that. We promise you nothing. We promise you no effort. We promise you no expectations. We, we don't even tell you who you could possibly even have those expectations from to tell you not to have them, right? So you not only can't have them and shouldn't have them, but you don't even know who could have them from. And it's also fully complete, done. Everything See, works that, that, awesome that's so funny from the first like, day. Uh, it's a finished product. Uh, it's working. It's working well so far. Yep. Um, people are screaming, but if you look at what's happening, uh, how many people are sending and using it, it's yep. growing like crazy. And um, it, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And, and think, when people call it, it it a scam, they either haven't looked or maybe they don't like the person who is getting the ETH and whatever he does with it, if it's you or whoever it is, I don't care because... I, I it's not it, relevant. It's, it's not the, relevant. You will receive yeah, no benefit right. from it. So I don't know why anyone would ask about it. Like, exactly. You, you won't receive any benefit thus. Maybe they don't like you because you're a little uh, shady, you wear gold stuff, and you're a weird dude, right? <laughs> I'm a genius. Anyone that doesn't like me can come on live stream and get annihilated. There's a trail of bodies behind me of people that tried to step to me. I'm more than happy to crush any of your heroes right in front of you, live. Uh, you know, what the things that I say, they're true, and I can prove it to you. And I, I won't just tell you my opinions on things. I'll tell you my opinion plus the logic that I used to arrive at it plus the input data that I used. And if we agree on the input data, we agree on the logic, we should agree on the outcome. So that, that's what hex. I like. You know, it's like uh, uh, not too long ago you were a Bitcoin maximalist yep. and things changed. Yep. You saw those changes and you adapted and uh, you changed your mind, which is, I mean, if you don't change your mind when things around you change, 
but I don't know what you do, right? Maybe you're still renting videos at Blockbuster. You know, it's like, <laughs> like the, the world changes. Like exactly. Ethereum didn't used to kick as much ass as it kicks now. It really kicks ass now. Like so it, that, it's a different that, game. That's, an, that's another thing what, what, what makes Hex so uh, interesting because first it's well designed, if you ask me, for a bull and a bear market in both cases. But second, it's an easy money token sitting on Ethereum. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, if you look at the coins you pumped in the last 30 days, Ethereum hasn't really moved that much. I think Ethereum is is about uh, to to have. It went from eighty. Chance. It bottomed at eighty five, okay. and then pumped for the plus token Ponzi pump, and then those founders got arrested. It was, so it got up to about I think three seventy five. See, but, but but that was funny, right? When when the founders of yep. plus token got arrested, mm -hmm. basically it was the top of Bitcoin because yep. billions of whatever money fiat money came mm -hmm. into the system. They got arrested. And yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And so the price went down to about 101, I think, 105, 101.5, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then now we're up at uh, today, 227, 225, yeah, something, something like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're only up about 2, 2.2x 2 from the local bottom. It's I think still 7x until the all time high, right? Bitcoin it's down 85% percent still. Yeah. So Ethereum's still down 85%. Bitcoin's still down 52, 53%. Um, I, the halvening's in about 90 days. So I think... Do you think it's going to have a big impact on Bitcoin? Do you think this time it's going to be... I think so. Bit? I, I think yeah. so because it's just like the 50 to 200 daily golden cross. It matters where you're crossing in relationship to the average. So if you're already, if you're already way above the average and you're crossing, well, then maybe you'll dump instead of pump. So, but if your price is kind of at the cross, so we're already so far depressed from the all time high and have been so for years and have shaken out a lot of weak hands, including all the speculators that bought President G's 42% up candle. And then it just 100% retraced and more and made new lower lows. You know, all that shaking out of those people, that's good for the price because they can't sell it later now. They already had to sell it. So, I think the happening plus technological advances on Ethereum, you know, plus maybe we could get some pump for the Ethereum futures on CME, you know, that are rumored to come out. Plus we could get some pump for maybe the uh, soft work of Taproot and uh, Schnorr Script and Schnorr Sig for Bitcoin, the anonymity upgrades. Um, these kind of could uh, unite at a good time to, to make good price appreciation. So Last for me, the years weren't so good, huh? <laughs> well, it depends on when you bought. I mean, if you bought the 3K bottom and you had up to 14K in five months, it's not that bad. You know, if you bought Hex, uh, you know, a month ago. Yeah, but you see that, that's very funny. Like, if you look at many YouTubers, uh, whoever, Twitter people, um, I don't see, or well, they don't see the connection between Plus Token and the price. And They're retarded. Only, They're um, retarded. It's, it's millions so obvious. and millions of people. Of course, for me, it's obvious too, because um, even if you look at one coin, and that's a really sad story. That's, even if it's one coin, plus token or BitConnect, there are millions of people investing, hoping they invest in the next big thing, but yeah. they invest in shit. Yeah. And um, just imagine this money would have poured into Bitcoin. Exactly. Or, in something which is le legitimate, right? Yeah. And we, yep. we would, uh, I don't know where we would stand. We have today, mad gains it's... in crypto, yeah. and we have the same sales pitch they have. Yeah. But without the exit scam and lies bullshit. So, yeah, but 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 Richard is gonna dump all his hacks and all the uh, origin address Ethereum, and we're all gonna get wrecked. He's a scammer. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah, a lot of. I always love to hear this story. I want to hear the story of the founder who blew his portfolio's brains out for fun <laughs> and dumped his coin to zero because he just hated his own fucking bags. Ah, that's great. Right, you're talking about. Yeah. I think he's gonna dump all his BTC to pump uh, Bitcoin SV. It's just like, who out there is shit talking their own bag? I mean, I'll shit talk my prime coin bag. Okay, that was a fuck up. I, I, someone said they were gonna do something, they didn't do it. Okay, I'm holding a bag worth of trash. So I'll shit talk my own prime coin bag because I can afford to do it as a laugh. But in general, people are not shit talking their bags. They're not, you know, there's, whoever the origin address might be, if it's a human, I would be very surprised if there's anyone in the entire universe that cares more about the Bitcoin, I'm sorry, the hex price than they do. I'd be very surprised. So.
I, I don't really I don't really care you know as long as this experiment uh, this well, thing works right and is that it's um, I mean, blockchains it's only function with rational actors mining only secures the network if people care about receiving the payments with rational actors these are socially enforced networks that revolve around people making the correct decisions for their own pocketbooks so if you don't believe in rational actors then you shouldn't be in the blockchain at all because then mining won't work anymore and people will just lie about what the real transactions are because they don't care about getting paid anyway. Like it's, you have to assume rational actors for blockchains to work. So any 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 conspiracy theory that involves someone shooting their portfolio in the head is stupid. <laughs> yeah, true. So I mean, I think it's it's going to be uh, one of the most interesting years in 2020 because of the halving. Because uh, this time around, we have Bitcoin SV, uh, Bitcoin Cash, and um, there, there's a completely different dynamic. If you ask me, which can um, yeah, radically change the events. And then we have Ethereum basically leading the way into uh, proof of stake. I mean, I don't know when that's going to come, if it's going to come, how it's going to work. Well, I don't know the technology. I actually don't give a fuck, really. Like, I'm happy with Ethereum as it works now. It works fine now. And we've got uh, anonymity now. And we've got scaling through the ZK rollup stuff now. It's still, you know, not fully out of beta, but it works now. You could take the risk and run it. Um, I don't really need the proof of stake shit. I don't really need uh, some of these new things that they they want to build. Sure, they're nice if they come, but the stuff works great now. Transactions are fast and secure today. So like, I, I mean, fast. I, you, can, you you can argue about fast. I mean, you gotta wait like twenty well, seconds I'm, or thirty seconds, right? I don't know, man. Twenty seconds is pretty fast to a Bitcoin guy. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> if you go to one of those Bitcoin ATMs, like you said, you're gonna wait yeah. an hour. You're gonna wait a fucking that's hour, that's and you're like, uh, and then you you've waited an hour to find out it's out of money. You could have told me that first. <laughs> yeah, funny. Like, some, someone in the chat is writing because uh, I, I talk. I, I like Bitcoin Cash. I like Bitcoin SV. I like what they are doing and uh, just uh, going a different way. And, and they say, ah, how can you shill those shit coins? And they are centralized and they are bad. And now you're talking about hacks. That's another scam. XRP, like, XRP centralized. Is anyone losing money on XRP? Shut the fuck up. Shut up yeah. with your fantasy bullshit. Look, okay. if you want people to start caring about this fantasy attack bullshit where the governments are coming to shut you down and the fucking transactions are getting rolled back, show me, show me, show me to people losing money on Doge. Show me to people losing money on XRP. Show me to people losing money on BSV. Now, there was a double spend attack apparently um, on BSV, I think. There was a double spend attack for sure on Bitcoin Gold. I know that. More than one. I think it's happened twice now. There was a double spend attack on uh, Ethereum Classic, but apparently the hacker gave the money back. Um, so you know well, there the are some. Classic is the real Ethereum, right? Apparently, <laughs> lol. So it so like if these people have the stick up their ass about attacks that never occur, and you're like, what? So tell me what really has to happen in order for XRP to fail. It's not that easy. Like, it's just, it's, people bought their bag and they want everything else to suck and that's it. And and they're just unreasonable with their insults. Right? I don't see a world where there's just one blockchain. We got like, I don't know, more than 190 countries, 190 uh, uh, nationalities, thousands of languages. I mean, uh, if you look at mankind, there's, there's, there's not going to be one, right? It's like, it's unlikely. Not, Unlikely. It's unlikely. It's just like, was there one server software? Is yes. there one Linux? Is there one keyboard? Is there one phone? It's fucking stupid. You have optimizations for particular use cases, and you always will. If there was only one blockchain, that would be terrible. You should be able to have speed and convenience and security trade-offs. You want more convenience with less security? You should be able to do that. You want more security with less convenience? You should be able to do that. You want more throughput with less security? You should be able to do that. And so you'll never be able to meet that trilemma with one product. It's just so, fucking stupid. See, because of the the, 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 the the people, like they are different, and there's not going to be one block. I don't believe there's going to be ever one blockchain. Maybe there's a dominant chain, but there's always going to be different chains for different use cases because people have different needs. You know what I think the yeah. most important and valuable thing any blockchain can do, any token or coin on any yeah. blockchain, appreciate. That's what I care <laughs> about. I care about I, the price yeah. going up. 
I mean, so that's what you, I you're honest. At least you're honest. I mean, I, I, I'm in it for the technology. Sure, I want to use uh, uh, coins to 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 buy stuff. But uh, <laughs> I, I got into crypto to make money, right? Yeah. Yes, and that's okay. That's okay. Having the world's fastest and highest appreciating asset class that's ever existed in the history of mankind is enough. That's enough. It doesn't actually have to cure cancer too. So, but Bitcoin uh, fixes this, right? <laughs> that's a great meme, though. <laughs> you're like, I don't know, man. Does Bitcoin like CME to CME launches futures and price drops eighty five percent from yeah. that day? Exactly. And you're 17th like, of December, right? You're like, eh. <laughs> and then back launches, price dumps. True. But finally, backed options launched and price didn't dump, so that was nice. Yeah. But now um, Kelly Loeffler is in, the, in politics, right? Who knows what's up now? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so is there the next? Let me let me give you the wish list of things that I'd like to see happen yeah. in Hex. Um, just, just before you do that, I'm yeah. just going to read one more comment here. Sure. There's one comment saying, "Who puts money into this deserves to get wrecked." How mm -hmm. much did I get paid to uh, to do this interview? I didn't get paid anything. I just like what's happening, yeah. and everyone is talking about it, and that's what that's what we're, we're the number one fin financial app on Ethereum since launch nine weeks ago. We're the number so, one financial app on Ethereum for nine weeks since the day we launched. We're the number three volume and number three liquidity on the Uniswap, the top uh, distributed exchange. Just, just to the person saying, um, if if you uh, wish that uh, everyone or you want everyone to get wrecked to invest their money into this. I mean that that's your opinion that's all right okay i i personally wouldn't recommend anyone to put money into crypto which you're not able which you can't afford to lose crypto is a gamble if you ask me and if you want to put money into bitcoin it can go to zero overnight and hex can go to zero yeah. i don't know nobody knows sure. but it's I'm all possible personally, yeah it's possible yeah. And i personally i am willing to take some risks and it's a lot of fun you know and uh, i don't mind putting a little bit of money into a fun thing which might turn out to be a great thing in the future in five years who knows i i went and did some chain analysis recently i saw some people hitting the the order book with some, some buys and some sells uh, like a week ago some guy bought fifty thousand dollars worth of hex and staked it for 15 years like 15 that years. yep and i couldn't okay. believe it i was like really because that's it's almost time. too good to be true right because that's what the game theory is designed to cause that specific thing and then to see it actually work was amazing to me. I was like, holy so he, shit. He's also betting on that um, Ethereum is going to be around and uh, successful in 15 years. Well, I mean, the system state of Hex can be dropped onto any working substrate. Okay. There's a lot of so different what, substrates that support. What, what would happen if Ethereum fails? Could you just... You would just airdrop it? the system state to another network. Like, like Trump or whatever. Sure. There's many. That's one. Okay. Um, you know, Or you could just fork it and use the code that existed before whatever the the break was so it's actually a pretty durable system as long as you get social consensus that you know these new coins go there right um see but but that's one thing what what, what i like about hex is that i mean i haven't promoted it to any mm -hmm. of my youtube following or whatever i just do this interview because it's interesting and of course i have an affiliate link in, in the description because mm -hmm. if you use it you get 10 percent points more. and, yep. and um, so if you want to do it do it if you don't like it don't buy it easy yeah yep. but the thing what, what, which struck me is that uh, there's a super, super active community yeah. building crazy stuff around this project. Yep. It's, 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 it's just happening, right? Yep. And when things just happen, good things happen in the future normally. That's and this is with everyone fighting us. This is with everyone calling us a scam, everyone blacklisting us and shit talking us and negative newsing us. I mean, Cointelegraph just published an article today that says, you know, ah, yeah. Hex is a Ponzi or whatever. Yeah. And then you go down to the link and it says Hex has no value and it takes you to, you know, coin360.io, which doesn't have any good data for Hex, doesn't have any of the exchanges that we trade on, doesn't know shit about shit. So they just link to bad, bad measurements. I'm going to ask them to link to CoinGecko that has good measurements and actually tracks Uniswap, which is a more transparent network. When, you, when people are wash trading and doing fake trading on some fucking weird exchange somewhere, you can't tell because you don't know who's doing the trades. On Uniswap, you know who is doing the trades publicly. It's the least likely to be wash traded thing because you can see who's doing the trades. Um, so I, I've seen people three and four X their Ethereum, buy low and sell high in Hex. Yeah. I've seen a guy instant buy 50K. 
he bought 171 million hex, which is about like 46.9K or something, if I remember correctly. And he staked it for 15 years straight, and it kicked <laughs> off a big bull run. And now I mean, people. It was funny, right? All of a sudden, the the um, adoption amplifier, the so influx of Ethereum was like it was going, it was high in the beginning, then it yep. slowed down, it slowed down, and, and all of a sudden it's getting it high again, up like crazy, yeah. right? And it might get low again. You know, you, you don't sure? know. It's I, like I hope for it to get low again. Right. It's it's <laughs> nobody nobody knows. But what yeah. what I do know is it's transparent, it's trustless, and there's no secret keys, and it's audited, and that's so much better than the vast majority of centralized exchanges. The vast majority of decentralized exchanges still have some private key bullshit in them. In our ecosystem with hexdex.win and uh, and go.hex.win, right? So go.hex.win is the AA system. You'll get 10% bonus if you use this link. And then hex.win is where you can actually sell if you want to sell. And there's 5.5, $5.7 million of liquidity there to sell into. You could literally sell one coin with like 0.07% slippage, one Ethereum, like $200, 220 bucks. You could sell 10 with, uh, you know, point something. I just, I tweeted this yesterday. You basically could sell like one, 10, a hundred or a thousand and you'll only get on a thousand, like 7% slippage. A thousand ETH. That's like 20, <laughs> $22,000. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. So there's some, go, go to hexdex.win and type one ETH and click the little no wallet connected to red text unless you've connected a wallet and then just click advanced at the bottom will show you your slippage and enter one ETH, 10 ETH, 100 ETH and 1000 ETH and see how thick those order books are. And you can sell into that instantly. See, when I first looked at Hex, I mean, I saw it from the beginning, I invested like 20 bucks and I got like, it was 0 0.1 ETH, I got like 50 or 80,000 Hex and then it went up and went down, but that's very fun. And I, I tried to look for an opportunity to, to actually buy it cheaper on an exchange. You can, to, but you have to wait and hope the market. But it's very, very uh, hard. I mean, the, the, yeah. the exchange market adapts very fast yeah. to what's happening with the adoption amplifier every day. True. It's, 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 it's arbitraged quick. out. Yeah. yeah. So some people try and do that in tags, which is something that CoinMarketCap does track, which is a terrible exchange that has like AML KYC is you and has huge withdrawal fees. Yeah. And so nobody wants to trade there. But some people get sucked in. They're like, oh, I can get a deal. You know, because Hex is on like 15 different exchanges. We're on a Korean exchange and called. It's two months old. It's like it, yep. if I tell people it's like two months and, and they see what's happening under the hood, really. It's yeah. like, okay, that's. Uh, We're on Bitcoin.com, Chainx.com, yeah, I mean, Korea. I wish I, I, I wish I would have known about Bitcoin in the first five years. <laughs> 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 right? So, so Matt. Imagine this, imagine this. We've already got open source software that does margin trading. And people hate hacks, they hate it, they hate it so much. Good. Maybe we should do margin trading with hacks. Maybe <laughs> you guys should be able to short it. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice for all you smart, 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 so smart guys that hate it? Like hacks. all the smart guys who were shorting Tesla, right? Yes, I would like the same thing to happen to you guys. Oh, okay. I want Let's you to learn about shorting. Let's yes. see if I want we can make that happen. I you to learn about shorting. Happen. <laughs> so, uh, it would be nice if people were messaging these different margin platforms to get them to add hacks so that people could short it. Because right. I think Richard, that would be a great let's... experience for you guys that hate hacks to learn about shorting. Um, I'll find see what someone who's going to, gonna, who's gonna um, I, I'm going to look for someone yeah. who will have a platform and uh, <laughs> make hacks available for shorting. Well, we've so... looked into the code. We've looked into the code. Um, so compound apparently okay. it's not really open sourced. Um, some parts of it are verifiable and viewable, but it's not open source is my, uh, impression of it. And they appear to only add coins very slowly. Um, there's a couple other platforms out there. Um, and I think their founders hate hex. So I don't think they're going to add it. Do you think stupid. they hate hex or do, they, do. do you think they hate you? Because you well, I messaged one guy and he spam reported me and I was like, okay, well, that's nice. That's a good one, bro. I remember that. And then, uh, yeah, another guy, you know, they're they're cocksuckers, basically. So uh, I'm going to fork their fucking software and uh, okay. do nice things with it that they weren't going to do. Little bitches. It's, um, you can do whatever you want, right? You're a free man. <laughs> it's a free world. Well, it's like I have to be careful giving people expectations. So sure. let, me, let me back off my statement a little bit. There's a lot of developers that work on Hex. And I have mentioned to them that a top priority is one, getting more eyeballs because 
uh, we're already way too good for the eyeballs we have. Like we're we're far far better than the tens of thousands of people that are that are interacting. We need hundreds of thousands of people. That's how good this stuff is. So eyeballs is something, but it's, it's hard to get eyeballs. Particularly developers, they're no good at getting it. You know, um, it's just a different skill set. So since they can't do eyeballs that well, I tell them, look, you know, what else is really neat? If you guys in your free time you want to do stuff, uh, I think margin trading and giving people the opportunity to short hex if they don't believe in it and giving them the freedom to speak their economic truths to the market and possibly lose all their fucking money because that's what happens to margin traders usually. They lose all their money. Yeah, okay. I, I know how it is. I lost yeah. lots of money. Yeah, margin there you trading. go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because predicting the future is very hard uh, and it's very easy to get wrong and it's very easy, particularly in a convex system where your collateral is losing value at the same time your position is and then you get liquidated faster than you thought you would because your collateral lost value too. Um, it's called convexivity. So, you know, if someone were to build uh, a fork of a margin trading platform in Hex, I think that would be pretty awesome. And I think, I think, I think it's more important than anonymity because there's so many other things that are kind of already working on that. Um, although somebody already did. But shorting Hex is not going to be that easy, right? I mean, the majority well, here, of here's Hex how that would is... work. But the someone, majority of hex is in staking, right? Someone would have to decide that there was more profit potential. Either they'd have to be stupid and make a bad economic decision for themselves or do some type of economic calculus in their own brain that says that putting their hex in a margin trading platform and allowing people to borrow it to short is a better financial decision for them than staking it or then sure. being a liquidity provider on Uniswap so if they made that financial calculus and wanted to give an opportunity to these people to short and probably lose all their money, because that's what usually happens to margin traders, uh, and th then they did that, then people would pay a percentage interest to open up uh, positions, uh, to borrow the hex, to sell it probably on hexdex.win, and then uh, you know hope to be able to buy it back cheaper to pay back their loan. Which is that's how shorting works. So how how about a margin trading exchange with Hex, um, where you get referral fees from the um, a good idea. exchange in Hex, which is then being idea. staked. It's a good idea. I was okay. also thinking that like the exchange could use its profit to just burn them to like reduce the Hex supply, something like that. I would just put it uh, as an into stake for one year, right? Every time you Ooh. you refer someone who, who trades on your Hex margin exchange. Uh, the fee you collect is going to be a certain percentage of the fee is going to automatically stake on your behalf. That's a cool country. idea. That's a cool <laughs> idea. I like that idea. That's a good yeah, one. See? It was a u useful yeah. stream so far, right? Yeah. Because yeah. there's the nothing. Idea? If you're going to give people stuff, give them stuff that's locked. It's like giving a kid a, a yeah. CD that expires on a certain date. It's it's worth more at that date, you know? And they, they feel richer the whole time if, if it's appreciating. Well, so well, we that's a pretty good the, idea. He's saying, someone's saying, uh, what's the total supply after one year? It's in between. You have, to, you have to guess because it's a function of how many people claim, how quick they claim, how many were referred, because yeah. inflates 32% to pay referrer and referee. Yeah. And the models that I've done, uh, it's in between. If, if more people free claimed, then the supply is higher. But since only 1.5% of possible BTC claims have occurred, I think we're going to be in the very low end of the supply, which might be 600 billion, 650 billion. Okay, someone is saying that the supply might be about 800 billion. It's way too no, much. No, it can't who's go that to, high. It can't. It can only go that. He says he's going to buy those hex. Sure. So we've already had, in his mind, we've already had insane inflation, because about a billion a day gets printed, but the price went up 8x. So ask that stupid asshole how the price went up 8x while we're printing a billion a day. And the circulating supply is only 16 billion. But the stupid asshole can't answer because he's well, stupid. What happens when, when the 365 days are over and mm -hmm. your stake gets, uh, you get your money back basically for plus the interest? Well, it only happens at the end of it. Sure, yes. But you only get paid at the end of your stake and yeah. you, your end stake. So the people that are free claiming, their stake is 350 days long. So if you free claim the last possible day, your stake's actually ending on day 700. It's not ending on day 350. It's ending on day 700 because you claimed on day 349. You see what I'm saying? So people have this misconception that like everyone's stakes are ending on day 353 when the big payday happens. It's just not the case. 
the and it's really not the case because our average active stake has a weighted length of like 800 days or 900 days so and the median is, length is like 600 days uh-huh. you can look these numbers up on hexstat.com so people are staking for a really long time and i think that the the staked ratio right now is like 74 75 percent around there you can also Pretty see big. that sure yeah and you know the the art there is you have to know when so the stake percent isn't as important as knowing when the stakes are going to end yeah. So like if you were at 75% stake, but the stake ends tomorrow, does it fucking matter? No. What matters is long stakes. So people talk about, oh, we locked up a billion dollars in DeFi. Did you really, though? How long is it locked for? Because locks don't mean shit if you can unlock. Exactly. I mean, it's not locked really, is it? Exactly. So, you know, Hex is the first currency in the world to do these time locks where we've monetized time just like CDs in the real world. But, but, if, but only for, for the Bitcoin free claims, right? If, if I put it into a stake, I, I can end it early, right? Well, correct. You can emergency end stake whenever you like, and you can see what the people have paid to do that at the wall of shame at hex.vision. Um, the question is, it's, it's going to get a lot more expensive to do that after the big payday. Because the big payday is going to amplify all the returns people got and that's going to be used to calculate your penalty if you try and end stake after. So if you if you if you receive the big payday and then try and like I, I check my math, but I think that after the big payday occurs, it's going to be a lot more expensive to uh, to emergency end stake percentage wise. Yeah. I think. Um, so I the developers that have free time and the hex dev chat, I tell them, look, I, th- I think margin trading is the, the most important thing that we could do if you can't work on eyeballs. So I think that's, I'll, I'll find someone. I got, I got a few people who uh, might be able to do some margin stuff with hex. Basically I want, I want it to be oh. DeFi though. The, the okay. reason I want it to be DeFi is I prefer that people need to have the real coins to short yeah. with physical settlement. This virtually cash settled bullshit lets the exchange make yeah. all the money and provide no buy pressure to the currency. So if it's if it's fiat if it's if it's hard settled with the actual currency and you have to get the currency to settle your short position or be liquidated, uh, then it increases demand for the currency when they need to sh- yeah. cover their cover their shorts. Exactly. Okay. But if it's ca- if it's cash settled, they can sure. not increase the supply and just find more cash, which is not as useful to the currency. It's true. Yeah, I, when people just, get wrecked, I want to see it turn into buy pressure. <laughs> exactly. That will be another pump and mental, as you can say. Yep. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, and you know what? I'm gonna, if we ever have a link that shows people how to short hex, okay. I'm going to make sure every hater knows exactly how to do it. Here's, right, how, you, uh, here's how you push uh, hex down to zero, guys. Here you go. Go and have that. fun. I'll, go I'll learn. take you up on that offer. I'll find someone who's going to make that happen. And I'd we'll love that. I can find someone who, yeah. who makes that happen. But I mean, I thought it would be interesting because there's so much hate for your yeah. project and it's so transparent. Um, this is what happened to, to Tesla. Just like you said, to, everybody exactly. hates Tesla. Everybody <laughs> shorted the fuck out of it. And now they're covering at 970. <laughs> exactly. So uh, there needs to be a shot for, hex, yeah. for all the I can't wait. And, that would be um, awesome. That would be awesome. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Of that. But I, you know what? I, I, I think that uh, the majority of people they just loud mouth and talking, a lot of that, and yeah. they don't really want to do that because in if it's a, a hex settled uh, a short thing, right? They would have to buy hex to do that. Only to cover, only to cover. So you you would you would just have to have like I won't mention one of the platforms, but uh, yeah. probably because it's run by cocksucker, but. You could have Dai or C Dai or ETH and use that as collateral. And as long as you have one of those things, you can up and up the short without ever touching the, uh, you know, what you're what you're shorting. You know what I mean? And then you only have to like rebuy it to to settle your short kind of thing. But once we have a short opportunity for hacks, I think it's going to make things much more interesting. And it's, I mean, I can see a, a, it move quicker or with shorts and the funny thing to me is people that like i'm i if you look at my first videos on youtube i'm a self-help guy that wants to make the world a better place i know that you just want to scam people exactly (laughs) yeah and so the uh i know that margin trading destroys lives and i advertise that 
But then how dare these other people who are creating margin trading projects try and gatekeep me when they're creating something that's going to destroy lives. You're like, yeah, but okay. It, but it, it's it's uh, weird, right? Like, <laughs> it, people lose money in margin trading, but Arthur Hayes, he, he's like a god or something. Like, he's like, he's admired, right? He's like a billionaire. It's like people still, uh, I mean, I, I, I see the need for margin trading. It's gambling, you know? And people it's like It's just gamble. fucking gambling. Yeah. And it's people just like gambling. gambling. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Apparently, I don't. I don't like gambling, but apparently, uh, people love it. So, I, I, I think that other than uh, some wallet enhancements, like, you, you know, it sucks that I'm in this position where I can't give you any expectation of work. It's well, really well, fucking Why would sucks. you need to work? I mean, the, the product is finished, isn't it? Yeah, I know. So every, everything else is a bonus, and um, let's, yeah. let's, let's see what the future holds. I don't know. Apparently, things keep getting better somehow, so let's <laughs> just hope, hope so. that continues. So, someone in the chat is asking, um, why was well, the question, why is uh, HEX no security and what is a CFD? CFD stands for a couple of things. So uh, CFD in finance terms stands for contract for difference. And it's a derivative that you can use to say, hey, if this thing went up or down, you're going to pay me. So basically like a bet. Yeah. And then CFD is also computational fluid dynamics. So like a couple of years ago, I was going to make a coin that did a useful proof of work instead of wasteful proof of work and did it using CFD code, but it was too hard. So we pivoted, gave up on it. Um, and then why is HEX not a security? So the Howey test defines what a security is. And it is, if you go on Wikipedia, when you give money to a common pool with the expectation of profit solely from the work of others. So like an ICO where someone is uh, shilling sure. an idea. And you give people money, they, they to... work, they give you more money back. Yeah. Which worked great in 2017. <laughs> yeah, it even worked great 20, 2019 for two or three projects total of probably a thousand or more. Um, so in Hex, uh, since you're the one minting your coins and you're the one doing all the work and no one else could possibly do it for you because you're the network, the code just sits there. You run it, and if you don't run it, it just sits there and nothing happens. Exactly. <laughs> so it's code sitting on a blockchain that you can run or not run to mint your own coins or not, and mint your own rewards or not if you stake, and that's it. And you know if you refer people, they mint coins to pay you. And so it's there's no uh, there's no way for you to get other people to hold your coins for you in a custody. There's no way for you to get other people to mint your coins for you. Those things are all you have to do the work because you're the one doing all the work. If you look and read the language in Howie, it totally 100% violates that word solely because you're the one doing all the work. Now, there's been other things that have happened after Howie where they try and say, okay, it's a division of labor. Okay, fine. It's division of labor. You're doing it all. No one else is doing it. So based on that alone, it's not a security. But we go farther. We go farther, farther than necessary. And we even don't give you any expectations of any effort whatsoever. Oh. You said it's designed to go up 10,000 X. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin yeah. was designed to go up higher, and it already they did a two million X. Just didn't market it that way, right? Exactly. Bitcoin was designed to go up higher. It already did a two million X. It's currently at nine hundred fifty thousand X. Pretty good though. <laughs> Ethereum did a ten thousand X. So all I'm doing is quoting you other numbers that have already occurred in the real world and saying because of superior design decisions, uh, we believe that it's possible that this thing outperforms that thing. Do you think that? That's it. Um, I mean, obviously, we are in the speculation phase, phase of cryptocurrency, but do you think it's going to transition over to a utility phase yes. where we really see the coins yep. with massive utility? Yep. Um, basically, like the dot com moment where um, companies, um, I mean, there were. As soon as everybody has a wallet. As soon as everybody yeah. has a wallet, we're there. Yeah. See, a, a technology like Uniswap that gives you a price oracle with liquidity with no counterparty risk that's resistant to attacks. The fact that that exists means that we can now take all of these different coins and swap between all of them and the other ones reasonably and freely without... Well, Ethereum uh, is great with ESC20 tokens. Once yeah. we have cross-chain swaps, yep. it's going it's to be uh, even better. Well, well cross-chain swaps are a little slower because you need two transactions. You need one on each chain. So staying on the single chain is better because you only need one transaction. Um, but cross-chain swaps are a nice, trustless way to, to get things done across two different chains. And we do have those in hex. 
So if you go to atomicswapwallet.io, uh, we do have atomic cross swaps in Hex between Bitcoin and Hex and Hex and Bitcoin, but they're very clunky. You've got to stay online constantly to have your browser open that has the private keys to handle the transactioning. And because it runs on IPFS, it's really bandwidth intensive and it will open like 2000 connections and you know it'll kill your proxy half the time. So it's, it's so clunky that people just don't use it. So we have atomic cross swaps between Bitcoin and Hex now, but no one uses them because they're too clunky, um, which is regrettable because I do like removing counterparties wherever you can do so. Yeah, unfortunately, the industry has developed into a different direction with um, not removing counterparties and middlemen, but basically introducing more and more. Yep. Right? <laughs> well, yep. I mean, for some reason, you can argue like Coinbase, the money of the average person is safer on Coinbase than it's in their own wallet. But um, I, I don't know if it's too early to tell. Mm. But uh, mm. I, I, so you said we're going to have mass adoption when everyone has gone, is going to have a wallet. wallet. Yeah, sure. Um, so you think Libra is going to help? I think that would be great progress if we can get it, yeah. I think Libra would get a lot of crypto wallets in a lot more people's hands. There's a lot of progress people don't know, like the browser, Opera browser has a crypto wallet built in. Apparently Brave has a crypto wallet built in. Um, apparently Samsung phones are coming out with crypto wallet built in. You're just going to get more and more of that. And then at one point, and Hex might be that point, you know, imagine these Ponzi schemes that onboarded all those millions of people. They didn't just go out of business and exit scam everybody. They actually stuck awesome. around. Everyone will be rich. You'd have millions and millions more people using crypto. And so, you know, Hex has that referral program and has the gains on the chart already that would allow people to, to create that type of velocity to onboard that number of users. You know, the, the infrastructure is all there and we just need a couple key influencers to hop on board. And I think we can get that virality in that scale. Um, is it, can you show how, how, how to buy um or how to put money into uh, the adoption amplifier? Is that uh, something? Do you, or do you have a video? It's really there? easy. I mean, it's right on the homepage. It's the second ah, it's video on the homepage. Ah, okay. yeah. So if you go to, if well, I won't give my referral link that I usually do because you have one. <laughs> um, if you go to his referral link, yeah. uh, it should take you to the, the homepage. And the second video yeah. there shows you how to join the adoption amplifier. It's as okay. easy as installing MetaMask, going to go to hex.win, clicking connect a wallet and clicking enter and typing how many ETH you want to put. And then exactly. pop-up window occurs and you click OK, confirm, and that's it. So and then, then you have um, you have to wait till the day is over to see yep. how many ETH are in there, how many X are going to be distributed and everything. Yep. And then you have to exit that and yep. uh, basically mint your coins, right? Yep, that's correct. You got it. And, and then you stake or you don't stake. Yep, it's up to you. Agree. I mean, you, you can stake for ten days, right? If you, you want to, you could to. sell Just on try. you could sell on Hexdex.win immediately if you wanted to, or yeah, you could stake okay. your coins, or you could transform any number of other ESC twenties. For instance, there's a hack that is pretty neat. If you're in America and you use Coinbase, you can get USDC for free, no fees. Mm -hmm. So you can turn your fiat into USDC with no fees, which saves you about two percent on Coinbase, and then you can go to Hexdex.win and transform that into Hex with the interface that's there and it saves you about two percent in fees mm -hmm. it's cheaper than if you did it for ethereum but if you did it through ethereum you could use his referral link and get a 10 percent bonus so you I mean, have to... if, from my experience uh, i would say lots of people have never heard of metamask right they don't even know what it is <laughs> well it's just a browser extension you just go to metamask.io and install it and it's, yeah, it's just it the video, right? I, 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 it's so easy change. it's yeah. really easy and if you need help, you can go to hex claims, t.me forward slash hex claim or t.me forward slash hex crypto. We got 20,000 people in hex crypto. And there's a lot of smart guys there that'll help you out. 20,000 people sounds a lot, but it's not really a lot, right? Like, just imagine if there's 20,000 people. It isn't crypto. It isn't crypto. crypto. But look at Plus Token. How many people did Plus Token have? Millions. Oh, sure. No, no doubt. Right? No oh. doubt. I mean, they were handing out flyers in supermarkets. <laughs> yeah. so, it's like they were doing it. I've really enjoyed the call, man. It's nice yeah. to talk to somebody that knows what you're talking about. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. It's like a little bit like that. 90 minutes already. Crazy. Yep. Uh, and you know, my glass of wine is finished too. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we had a great conversation. And uh, yeah. I, I'm definitely going to uh, see what I can do I, and uh, what I should, people I can find about shorting hacks. I would appreciate that. I would. Uh, can I show my social? Yeah, sure. So sure. Richard Hart Win on Twitter. Uh, Richard Hart on YouTube. Um t.me forward slash hex crypto if you want to check out hex hit his referral link down in the description 
Um, what else? If you want to see stats on like trade volume and stuff, you can go to coingecko.com or you can go to uniswap.info. Um, it'll show you the volume, who's doing the trading. You can eyeball everybody. Um, if you want to see those, hex, those stats websites, hexstat.com, hex.vision, hexinfo.io, hexviz.xyz, alternate wallets, hardhex.xyz, another hex.win. It's, it's crazy big. The community is, I was, yeah. I was uh, amazed at how, bad, how, how big it is, how uh, uh, versatile it's like. There's so many people, so many different things, and you have nothing days. to do with them, right? It's like nothing. People just do it, and I, I found that super interesting, and that's why I wanted to talk to you because it's it's like it's like a living thing. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I, and, I've never met these guys. Yeah. I've never, uh, you know, what happens is a dev will message me and they'll say, "Hey, you know, I wanted to do something cool with hacks." I'm like, okay, They're like I'm gonna build a stats website. I'm like, all right, and you don't hear from them again, yeah. and then like two months later, they're like, "Yo, here's my site." <laughs> You're like, "Wow, this is awesome. This is amazing." Because usually people tell you they're going to do stuff, they never do it. Um, but I've had multiple times now people say they're going to do something in the Hex ecosystem, and then it happens, and you're like, God damn, that's cool, man. So we've got we've got our own like proof of weekend style Ponzi built on top of Hex that someone built. Yeah, but yeah, you can cool. lock your funds in the main contract while you're playing. You can't do that in other Ponzi's, and I and I shouldn't <laughs> be calling it a Ponzi because it's honest and it's and how yeah. it works and mechanics. I guess they call it an hourglass game or something. Um, so I would never promote that kind of thing because I, I don't like games in general, let alone, uh, you're going to like the, the, the new margin trading where you can <laughs> short hex and the, <laughs> and the fees are going to be staked into the smart contract, right? With a referral program. That's a great <laughs> exactly. idea. Actually, that's a great idea. I have to think about that. Yeah. Think about it. I, I, well, we, we can talk about it. If I find someone, I have someone in Please. my who, who might be able to, to make great. that happen. And um, I'm ready. I'll, I'll get you in touch and um, we'll see. Maybe we have another talk and can right. show a way to short hex. Here, guys, here's how you short this, this shit into the ground. Yeah. Short I mean, it to well, zero. <laughs> Interesting fact, you cannot actually short to zero on yeah. Uniswap. It's not mathematically possible because it's an X times Y equals K market maker. Mm -hmm. So I could give you the white paper on the analysis, analysis of, of the dynamics of how these market makers work. It's very interesting. Very, you, very had some, you had some great advertisement like people were uh, talking about hex is a scam or whatever the website is called and it's basically it's a referral just a site referral website yeah. it's like hex people scam are talking about it and yeah. short hex .com or whatever <laughs> i'm gonna find someone make that happen right? fuck yeah dude i support <laughs> it i would shell it for you this is <laughs> good talking you. to you man richard thank you very much for coming onto the show My it was pleasure. it was a fun talk and uh, i hope maybe someday in the future if Hex goes bust and everyone is happy that you were scamming everyone. We talk again. <laughs> oh, in a different All timeline, right. Hex is super successful and everyone yeah. is going to be, fuck, why did I buy at least 20 bucks? It's only 8x bucks. in 31 days, guys. It's only 800% in 31 days. I mean, yeah, hey, eight, eight I'm sure you're doing better in your coin, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, Bitcoin went up 30%. Uh, yeah. Hilarious. All right, Richard, thanks very much. Wherever you are in the world, and it's fun to follow you. So, guys, follow Richard. He's he's uh, he's he speaks his mind. He doesn't uh, hold back with anything, and he says what he thinks. And he has a project. Check it out. Check out my link. If you don't like it, don't check it out. If you like it, do whatever you want. You're a free man, a free woman, whatever. And um, yeah, I'll hope I will talk soon in the future. Sounds good, man. See you. All right. Bye bye.